Last week we looked at how God makes promises and keeps them. The promise that we looked at was the promise that God gave to Abraham that the savior of the whole world, the one that was gonna bless the entire world, was gonna come through Abraham's family. But big problem, Abraham and his wife Sarah didn't have any kids and they were way, way too old to be having kids. That is, until God gave them a baby boy. A baby boy named Isaac. But Isaac wasn't the savior. No, the savior, Jesus, was gonna come way, way later. Today, we're gonna to look at Isaac's kids, some other people in Jesus's family, and we're gonna talk about how it's important for us today. Let's hear about Isaac's sons. One day, when Isaac was old and turning blind, he called for Esau, his older son, and said, my son, yes, father, Esau replied, I'm an old man now, Isaac said, and I don't know when I may die. Take your bow and a quiver full of arrows and go out into the open country to hunt some wild game for me. Prepare my favorite dish and bring it here for me to eat. Then I will pronounce the blessing that belongs to you, my firstborn son, before I die. But Rebekah overheard what Isaac had said to his son Esau. So when Esau left to hunt for the wild game, she said to her son Jacob, Listen, I overheard your father say to Esau, Bring me some wild game and prepare me a delicious meal. Then I will bless you in the Lord's presence before I die. Now my son, listen to me, do exactly as I tell you. Go out to the flocks and bring me two fine young goats. I'll use them to prepare your father's favorite dish. Then take the food to your father so he can eat it and bless you before he dies. But look, Jacob replied to Rebekah, my brother Esau is a hairy man and my skin is smooth. What if my father touches me? He'll see that I'm trying to trick him and then he'll curse me instead of blessing me. But his mother replied, then let the curse fall on me, my son. Just do what I tell you. Go out and get the goats for me. So Jacob went out and got the young goats for his mother. Rebekah took them and prepared a delicious meal, just the way Isaac liked. Then she took Esau's favorite clothes, which were there in the house, and gave them to her younger son, Jacob. She covered his arms and the smooth part of his neck with the skin of the young goats. Then she gave Jacob the delicious meal, including freshly baked bread. So Jacob took the food to his father. My father, he said. Yes, my son, Isaac answered. Who are you, Esau or Jacob? Jacob replied, it's Esau, your firstborn son. I've done as you told me, here is the wild game. Now sit up and eat it so you can give me your blessing. Isaac asked, how did you find it so quickly, my son? The Lord, your God, put it in my path, Jacob replied. Then Isaac said to Jacob, come close so I can touch you and make sure that you really are Esau. So Jacob went closer to his father and Isaac touched him. The voice is Jacob's, but the hands are Esau's, Isaac said. But he did not recognize Jacob because Jacob's hands felt hairy, just like Esau's. So Isaac prepared to bless Jacob. But are you really my son Esau, he asked. Yes, I am, Jacob replied. Then Isaac said, now my son, bring me the wild game. Let me eat it and then I will give you my blessing. So Jacob took the food to his father and Isaac ate it. He also drank the wine that Jacob served him. Then Isaac said to Jacob, please come a little closer and kiss me, my son. So Jacob went over and kissed him. And when Isaac caught the smell of his clothes, he was finally convinced and he blessed his son. So Jacob was the younger brother, which at the time meant that he wasn't gonna get that much good stuff from his dad. No, he was gonna get less stuff than his brother Esau. And it also meant when dad died, he wasn't gonna get that good of a blessing. You know, the blessing that everyone assumed was gonna pass on the promise from God, the promise that was given to Abraham and passed on to Isaac, well, everyone assumed it was gonna go to Esau. So it looked like Jacob, well, he wasn't gonna get that much stuff. His family wasn't gonna be important. Well, that is until him and his mom came up with a plan to trick Isaac. Now, Jacob out and out lied to his dad. He did that to get what belonged to his brother. That's basically stealing. Does Jacob seem like a very nice guy to you? Doesn't seem like it to me either. And when we read other parts of his story, we see that Jacob kind of had a tendency to lie and trick people. He doesn't seem like a very good role model, right? But there's something interesting that we learn. You see, Jacob stole the blessing that belonged to Esau, but when he did, God still kept his promise. And he kept his promise using Jacob's family. The savior of the world was still gonna come through their whole family, but he was gonna use Jacob's family specifically to do it. But why? I mean, Esau at least was kind of doing the honest thing and Jacob totally wasn't. Well, I think it teaches us about the people that God uses. 
You see, Jacob was not a perfect person. And neither are you, and neither am I. So if God can use a liar and a thief like Jacob to bring the Savior into the world, well, he can use people like you and like me. So when we look throughout the Bible, we see time and time again that God uses messy people to do his work. I'm serious. Go ahead and check this out. Think God can't use you? Think he only uses perfectly qualified people? Take a closer look. Moses was not a great speaker. Jonah ran from God. Jacob was a liar. Noah got drunk. Rahab was a prostitute. David had an affair. Jeremiah was depressed a lot. Solomon was rich in wisdom, but poor in lifestyle. John the Baptist was just plain poor. Timothy was too young. Abraham was too old. Lazarus was dead. Sarah was barren. Naomi was a widow. Gideon and Thomas both doubted, and so did Sarah. Peter lacked self-control. James and John were self-righteous. Paul had a short fuse. Well, so did Peter and Moses. Actually, lots of people did. God's army isn't perfect. It never has been. It's the march of the unqualified. Get in line. So it's not just Jacob. It's almost everyone we read about in the Bible. So there will be plenty of times in your life where you look around and go, wow, my life is messy. And in those times, you might be tempted to think that there's no way that God could love you. There's no way that God could want you. There's no way that God could use you to do his work. But those are all lies. When you feel that way, when you're tempted to feel that way, remember what Jesus has already done. Because Jesus came and he died and rose again for you. He paid the price. He bought you back already because he loves you. You are God's child and will be forever. So yeah, if God can use someone whose life is as messy as Jacob's, he can use you too. Today we learned that Jacob lied and stole to get what he wanted. We also learned that Jesus was going to come from Jacob's family, not Esau's. So that shows us that God can use messy people to do his work. So when you're down, when you feel like God couldn't love you, when you feel like God couldn't use you, remember what Jesus has already done for you. Because no matter what, even if your life is as messy as Jacob's, God still loves you. Jesus still died for you and you're his child forever. Let's talk to him now. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving messy people. We know our lives are messy and we know we've done things we shouldn't have. We ask that you forgive us and we ask that you help change our lives, help to clean up those messes. God, we thank you for using messy people and help us to do the things that you want us to do. We pray this and the prayer that you taught us our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Thank you so much for joining us for our online family worship. If you'd like to hear more about Jacob and his story and how God uses messy people, please check out Pastor's Message here on our channel. Have a great week, everybody.